Hello everyone. Welcome to Literature Warriors. Today I would be discussing the characters of the short story The Lumber Room by Saki. Well, so in this short story there are two identical and important significant characters. Those two characters are the character of Nicola and the character of the aunt, the Nicola's aunt. Well, I would be discussing these two characters briefly uh, with some of the quotations from the text. Well, I would move on to the first character that is the character of Nicola. So, Nicola represents the, the child's world, the children's world and uh, he is just a small kid, but he is really highly intelligent and he is a precious child. Uh, so, when we are going through the story, we can realize that Nicola is really intelligent because uh, when considering the incidents, the first incident we meet with Nicola is uh, he has put a frog into his wholesome bread and milk by himself and he is refusing to eat it so it's a kind of an intelligent deed uh, for the age of Nicola and then he is uh, going to the gooseberry garden and he is planning and going to the lumber room and having a wonderful experience there so when considering him as a child with with the perspective of a child and thinking about his psychological needs and all he is a marvelous child and he's a precious child and he's highly intelligent as well to his age well the next point is he is clever in planning so i have quoted some of the lines here Nicola had not much experience of the art of fitting keys into the keyholes and turning locks but for some days past he had practiced with the key of the schoolroom door so th see how he is pre-planning things so it is another aspect of an intelligent child so this is, this shows his clever planning mind well he is also a good tactician that means he has a lot of strategies to trick others so it is one of the aspects of his uh, childish nature as well but he is uh, as a child he is a good ta good tactician well you can see the corded lines here you said there couldn't be possibly there couldn't possibly be a frog in my bread and milk but there was a frog there so he is refusing to eat it and also uh, when he was asked i have not written it here when he was asked to go and fetch the ladder when the aunt is in the rainwater tank he is asking for uh, uh, for jam for uh, jam to have with tea the strawberry jam for tea so he is uh, he is having some strategic ways to trick others well and he is also highly imaginative and has a fine sense of appreciation so this is another good aspect of a child so we can see he goes to the uh, imaginary world with the things in the uh, things in the tapestry which was in the uh, lumber room so you can see uh, the the writer has explained how he enjoys the drawing in the tapestry so it was a uh, a breathing story i have quoted the line to nicola it was a living breathing story the 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 picture in the tapestry well and he enjoys everything in the lumber room very imaginatively he peeps into everything in the lumber room the candlesticks 
the teapots uh, and the pictures there everything he peeps into everything and he's imagine he goes the best example is uh, he is going beyond the picture there in the tapestry he is having some lives imaginations there well uh, moving on to the next point he is really observant as well he observes that bobby's boots are tight and observes the frame tapestry in an imaginative way so he is to his age he is really observant he says bobby won't enjoy his boots are hurting him they are too tight so before aunt nicola has observed that bobby's boots are too tight for him and another quotation is there nicola peeped into it and behold it full of colored pictures of birds well and the last point about nicola is he is really mischievous nicola puts a frock into milk and bread and refuses to eat it and he asks for strawberry jam and tells his aunt is a devil when she was in the rainwater tank this can be also taken to prove that he is a good tactician because when the aunt is in trouble he takes the opportunity uh, and tells that he is the evil one not the aunt so i have quoted the two lines there will there be strawberry jam for tea now i know that you are the evil one not the aunt so this kind of quotations i think it's easy to remember so you can you cannot remember the long quotation so take some uh short lines questions and the most significant words from the text to support your answers well next i would be going to the character of the aunt so the first and foremost yes the characteristic is he is she is narrow minded so i have quoted the line a woman of few ideas which immense powers of concentration well she is always having a narrow mind that's why she is giving a punishment a psychological punishment to nicola so it's really hurting him and she, uh, he is doing something else due to the aunt's punishment so the next one carry cashier of exaggeration of spinny strish guardians who undertake the upbringing of children well so this is another point to talk about the aunt of nicola so the the punishment is too harsh and it's exaggerative actually the spinny strish means the spinny strishes are really that that means uh, is unlucky uh unfortunate and uh, turned away parents or guardians so she is acting as a exaggerative person uh who is going to uh, give harsh punishments to her own child to her own child and uh, her upbringing seems to be very ridiculous and here the writer has ridiculously said this the older wiser and better people had proved to be profoundly in error in matters about which they had expressed the utmost assurance so though the older and wiser people are considered as, as better people in the story we can see how nicola proves that she he is wiser than his aunt well the next point about the aunt is uh, he she is not sympathetic no leniency or flexibility the aunt is not lenient 
एंड गिविंग अ हार्श मेंटल पनिशमेंट फॉर निकोला जस्ट फॉर अ ट्रिवियल मस्चिवस डीट सो इट इज रियली नॉर्मल to see a child has done a mischievous deed putting a frog into bread and milk and uh, refusing to eat it but the aunt is so serious and gives a very harsh punishment and the punishment is a mental a psychological punishment without understanding the psychology of the child well and she is boasting telling it will be a glorious afternoon how they will enjoy themselves so this is to hurt nicola now it is really a uh, harsh to give mental punishments so physical punishments are somewhat better comparing with the mental punishments as this well moving on to the next point it says the aunt plays the role of the villain in the story now for the nicola as well as for the readers the aunt is the villain in the story and an unimaginative self proclaimed adult who demonstrates a very negative attitude towards children well of course here yes, he uh, she is having a very negative attitude towards children an inferior attitude towards children and she is really authoritative and dominant dominant and uh, she is always commanding the others and she wants everyone to be as she wants well uh the next point is well equipped with authoritative powers of course she is very authoritative and the quoted lines here you can see you are not to go to go into the gooseberry garden so that is said in a in a commanding tone it is just like a warning me didn't you hear me so it's harsh and don't talk nonsense go and fetch the ladder the commands are given very harshly well then i have uh, written briefly some of the other characteristics of the aunt she is she is the representative of the adult world so which she thinks that it is the perfect uh, world and uh, she knows everything and she believes that the children should be molded up according to the advices uh, and the uh, the responsibilities and uh, with the advices and commands of a child and the next point is uh, the mindset of a women for of the women for yes she is always controlling the child and the others as well so she is just a caricature of the women folk as well most likely of the middle class yes we can see from the background and the things uh, described about the aunt it shows that uh, she is a woman from middle class and she is duty conscious uh, that is important because as she is dis- uh, duty conscious she wants the others to be very responsible even the little kids and she is self centered that's why she wants to control the others and she wants the others to listen to him listen to her always well and she is also domineering and a very dominant character does turn rigid and not flexible not lenient she is and holds inferior thoughts about children that's what i told you earlier as well she is uh, not thinking that the children also have something in their minds uh, they also have imaginary powers more than the adults so there is a quotation from the text it was her habit whenever one of the children fell from grace 
to improvise something of a festival nature from which the offender would be rigorously debarred. So, the deprivations are given for the offender, the person who has done the faults. Fault. So, here the Nicola is the offender and he has been rigorously punished and deprived of going to the uh, Jack Barrow Sands. Depri deprived of uh, deprived of having some kind of amusement so it's it's like uh, it's ridiculous because uh, it shows how inferior thoughts that the aunt has towards her own children and giving the the way of giving punishments is really uh, inferior because that is she is having some negative thoughts about the child well so this is all about the character of the aunt so you can use some of uh, the short lines as the long lines are uh, difficult to remember when you're writing answers you can use the short lines uh, quoted from the text and some significant words are enough to use well so i have discussed the two characters the most important two characters nicola and the aunt of uh, nicola in the short story the lumber room by saki well uh, i hope to discuss the themes and techniques of the short story the lumber room as well so thank you all for watching this video and i hope you have got something about these two characters thank you very much and hope to come up with another video describing the themes and techniques of the short story well thank you again